Right, so we've got five startups. Let's bring out the first one, Carbon Health. Presenting for Carbon Health is Aaron Bali, Tom Berry, and Greg Burrell, MD. <laughs> Welcome to the stage, guys. You have okay. six minutes. <laughs> Ready? Uh, yep, all set. Okay. Hello, TechCrunch. My name is Aaron Bali, and I am the founder and CEO of Carbon Health. With me on stage are my co-founders, Tom Berry and Dr. Greg Burrell. As crazy as it may sound, we are building a healthcare system from scratch. Let me tell you guys why. Eight years ago, I moved from Turkey to Silicon Valley to start a company called Udemy. Udemy is now the world's largest marketplace for online courses. I was lucky to witness how a seemingly undisruptible market could be transformed with the power of networks. But a few years ago, my attention moved from education to healthcare. My mom had a rare disease called neurosarcoidosis. Going from doctor to doctor with hundreds of pages of documents and desperately trying to tell her story to doctors made me look at healthcare with fresh eyes. So since that day, my mom recovered, which was great, but I have been imagining this healthcare system where doctors, nurses, labs, pharmacies, all across the country can collaborate to give the best possible care to their patients. Almost like everybody was part of one amazing hospital. Almost like world's largest hospital. But obviously that's crazy, right? You cannot create a hospital from scratch. There are tens of things that make it. But I'm not really convinced. Let's take a look at what a hospital is. At its core, there are doctors who give the actual care. They are the heroes of the system. The hospital itself is mostly an administrative layer that handles things like registration, billing, and shared access to medical records. Turns out, you can replace most of these things with, with technology. And just like Udemy became the world's largest school, and Airbnb is the world's largest hotel network without owning any buildings, and Uber is the world's largest cab company without owning a single car, we believe that the world's largest hospital won't be about buildings. Instead, it's going to be a ubiquitous technology platform that connects us with our doctors. And that's exactly what we are doing at Carbon Health. <clears throat> I'll let my co-founder, Tom, show you guys the product. Right. So onboarding with Carbon couldn't be easier. You just scan your insurance card, and you're good to go. We get all the information we need from your carrier. Then uh, you pick your emergency contact, uh, choose a primary care doctor, and sign your name uh, on a privacy notice, and you're all set. No more long registration forms. And then could we switch to the live app? So once you've been using Carbon for a while, uh, this is what your home screen will look like. It's a snapshot of your health organized by the conditions that you have. Here you can see my chronic asthma and uh, the risk that I broke last month. And you'll see everything here, your medical images, lab results, uh, referrals, appointments, um, and it's all right on your phone. But this is more than just a record. Uh, it's not just about looking, you can also take action. So you can send those prescriptions to your house. You can reschedule your appointments. You can interact with your medical images. You can find a specialist and send your referral to them. You can add vitals to your actual medical chart. You can uh, compare prices of medical imaging centers when you're deciding to get an x-ray. Uh, and we're just getting started. So let's look inside a case. If you click on uh, one of them here, you'll see basically your messaging history with your doctor. So you no longer have to worry about keeping track of everything your doctor says. It's all right here. And if you click on the details button in the top right, uh, you'll actually see the real medical chart that your doctors are using to take care of you. And, um, We've painstakingly designed the doctor experience as well as the patient experience uh, because it's very important. So what happens at the moment that you actually need help? Well, you just click the big blue button and you can quickly get a vaccination or wellness checkup, but let's say that in this case, it's a new issue. So we've automated a lot of the questions that your doctor would be asking you to save time. And these questions dynamically adjust based on your medical history and the answers that you give us. Soon you're all done, 
and we've notified one of our physicians who will review your case. They'll usually ask a few follow-up questions, and then they might give you a treatment plan that you can handle at home, or if they need a physical exam, they'll ask you to come into our clinic. Um, and so you can go ahead and schedule an appointment, um, and that's all handled right there for you. So we've basically built a hybrid, a seamless hybrid of virtual and in-person care so that when you get to the clinic, your clinic doctor has all the context of your virtual interactions. And similarly, when you leave the clinic, uh, you can choose to do follow-ups virtually uh, if you wish. So, um, i trying to remember what was next. Oh, yeah, let's go ahead and fill a prescription. So when you're done, you'll get a treatment plan. Um, and we can go ahead and fill the prescriptions on the treatment plan. So as you can see here, you could send it to a pharmacy for pickup, or you could actually get it delivered uh, to your house if you wish. And then once that prescription is filled, since we know, for example, that antibiotics, you need to take them for a certain number of days at a certain time of day, we can schedule the pill reminders automatically, and all you have to do is flip them on. Aaron, do you want to finish up? Yeah. So, and could we switch there, back to that presentation? Yeah, actually? There, are, there are a lot of other things that we don't have time to show you guys on stage. But the important thing is, since you control your experience all the way from the physician applications to the patient applications and integrations with third parties, we are able to design an experience that would be impossible for the traditional healthcare providers. So this Monday, we are opening Carbon in our pilot primary care clinic in San Francisco but soon it's going to be available for all independent practices across the country. So go to carbonhealth.com and join us. Let's design the future of healthcare together. All right, nice work. <laughs> Judges. Gary, it sounds like you've got a question. Yeah, uh, congrats. It's a, it's a beautiful looking app. You've got a little bit of a chicken and egg problem. You've got patients and you've got doctors. Talk about how you're going to uh, go to market. Get the patients or get the doctors? Yes, that's a great question. So, in my experience with Udemy, we had the same thing with our, between courses, instructors, and teachers. Here, the way we are cheating is we opened our own clinic first. This way, we, can, we don't have to convince our doctors. They are like cellular, they are cellular doctors. So we can create the best experience possible and get, uh, get like patients to sign up. And what we excel is at is the patient experience. But once we have a lot of demand, then we will open these, uh, these two other clinics in San Francisco. So all these patients who sign up to Carbon, now we'll be able to go to those clinics. And then what will probably happen is, some of these clinics will realize, okay, this is free patient flow, amazing, but it's also so much easier than how I normally practice. So maybe like I can move my existing patients to this platform so that I'll reduce my overhead. And then we'll, I mean, similarly, we had the same thing at Udemy, so people who had courses moved their existing students on board. So we, that's how we will get uh, liquidity in, in, some, in one market. When we go to another city, we have a pretty good like, playbook, so we'll kind of repeat the playbook. So we may or may not open the first clinic, but I think the, like, the, the process is pretty, pretty clear for us. And then do you integrate with existing systems, like if they have an EMR, or are you a replacement for those existing systems? Yeah, another great question. So um, we don't integrate with the, the EMR. We, we are the medical record system of the uh, medical record system. So the only thing we have to integrate is uh, their, um, their scheduling systems, so that there's no like, conflict. So a, a practice can choose to only just accept patients from us, right? Just like a restaurant could choose to like, or get deliveries from DoorDash. But, but I strongly believe that once they realize how much easier this is, they will want to move their existing practice to us. Then like, there is more work for us, but that's obviously an amazing thing to have. Um, how, how do you guys make money? Uh, let me ask you this question. Are you selling the there. software or are you charging yes. some percentage of the billing? Yeah, so we don't charge anything to the patients. It's your standard copay, and we mo collect most of the, uh, the money from insurance companies as usual. And we take 7% from every transaction. So this is like a percentage of the doctor's revenues, but it's not a big deal for them because they are already paying this to a, either practice management product or a billing company. So this is what, what the charge is like in line with their, uh, their charging. But virtual care isn't covered by insurance, so how do you handle the payments on that? So uh, that's another good question. So this is, that's, to be honest, a little bit t t like to be learned, right? Because some insurance companies started paying for virtual interaction, so we, we might take advantage of that. And we are cent doing it centrally, so um, we don't ask the practices to do virtual care, so we, will, we are responsible for that. But uh, in the future, we might, if the insurance companies don't 
universally supported, we might have to charge a little bit like a transactional fee per interaction. Or it could be that because it's messaging based, we optimize it so much that like we can take it out from our overall margins. Can you expand a little bit on your relationship with the pharmacies for getting the actual medicine? Um, sure. Let, let me answer this one too. Um, we made integrations with pharmacies, medical imaging centers, labs, insurance companies, one more I forgot. So um, with pharmacies, we send them the prescription, they handle it. Uh, and with one, we are working with a pharmacy in San Francisco which does home delivery, if you want home delivery. And they will actually soon pin, like, right now it's a one way integration, we just push them data. But soon they will actually pass back data about whether the, the patient picked up the medicine or not. So it's an integration, like the basic integration is too simple, it's e-prescription or faxing. We do it universally right now. But for with select pharmacies, we can do a better kind of like more seamless flow. So the, the patient doctor communication flow is incredibly broken. So thanks for fixing that. Yeah. Um, but the, the space of, uh, of healthcare and physicians is pretty vast and hospitals are a big part of it. How do you think about kind of the, the bigger side of the market, the enterprise? You wanna take this one? Yeah, sorry. Uh, so, could you repeat the question, though? How do you think about kind of capturing all of healthcare? How do you think about hospitals? How do you think about not just primary care? How do you think about expanding to all sure. of it? So, we wanted to start with uh, primary care because we really feel like that is uh, the main starting point for the patient, and it's really the first point of contact within healthcare. Um, but we feel like actually some of the additional um, things that we would add on, like specialists and other areas of healthcare, would potentially be easier. Um, in the sense that a lot of those are transactions, go to a specialist and then you come back to your primary care. You go here, come back. Um, but I think that realistically it will take some size before we're able to uh, be able to approach the larger hospital market and consider talking to them about using our uh, record and communication system as well. Um, we're hoping that with, with time and with uh, an established network in the outpatient world that we'll be able to move into the inpatient world. Yes. I mean, just to uh, kind of add, we are focused on independent practices uh, for the like foreseeable future. And more than half of the doctors in the US are, are a part of independent, these independent practices. That's our current target. The, we hope to integrate with hospitals in the future, but that's going to be a kind of longer process. All right, I think we're pretty much out of time. So let's give it up for Carbon Health. Thanks, guys.